Hey guys, I'm with Dimitri Tursunov, who beat the shit out of us, French Davis Cup. Uh, what year was it? Uh, shit, I don't remember. 2006 maybe? Yeah. 2007? You were on I mean, fire. So many times I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> you were on fire this weekend. Who did you play against? Um, I think I played uh, so Richard Gasquet uh, I only played one match uh, that was a five setter it was uh, pretty tough uh, I remember I went into a full body cramp uh, I was trying to do recovery on a bike and I sat down on the bike and uh, I went into a cramp and then I f just slid off the bike and I sat you know with basically right between my legs right on the you know on the frame of it so Whoa. Yeah, and I was cramping, and I was also hit a couple of par body parts. They were very sensitive, so it was it was a good memory for me. Where was the the game, the weekend? Pa, in in France. Yeah, so um, I think it's Pa, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I've checked your uh, record. You were seven in the world. You're no twenty. No, 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 no. Twenty, yeah. Seven, you you you, you 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 won seven <laughs> titles. Yes, yeah, se seven titles. Um, I think in singles and doubles. Um, and I know that not because I remember it, but I just saw it in Wik Wikipedia. Um, Same. Yeah, when I was uh, applying for a job, I was like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what's my what's my resume again? Yeah, yeah. And you're now thirty nine. Yeah, I'm thirty nine. I'll be forty um, this year. How long ago have you stopped? Uh, I started 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop, stop your career. Oh, so long stopped. Um, so, I mean, 2014 was like a last year that I actually well, I was playing uh, consistently. And then after that, you know, I was on and off. I've just continued to have some injuries. And so 2017... Uh, basically ran out of my protected ranking um, I tried to play a few challengers kept um, getting injured there so that's why I decided to stop in 2017 actually I wanted to continue but uh, but then I went to a physio um, at uh, a tournament and they told me that you know you're gonna need to have a, um, a month of full medical rehab and that's before you can even start training again and I said like I, I can't do this anymore <laughs> I'm investing more into medical clinics than into myself so <laughs> when I was following the circuit back in this time I was pretty young when you stopped for example I was 14 years old and I was hearing your name when the people were saying the craziest player on tour must be you and Mikhail Yodra who wins he does Uh, there's no chance um, because it doesn't matter what I do he's gonna do it twice as hard <laughs> so if I jump with a parachute he's gonna jump without a parachute um, so it's like it's impossible to beat him were you friends um, yeah we were like I mean we didn't hang out that much but we we're like very friendly and um, uh, yes I mean you know like I guess because friends is Kind of a big so word. it's a very yeah, broad broad word uh, but um, yeah we were um, we we're very friendly with each other um, but honestly I, I don't think I had enemies on tour there's maybe like one or two guys that were a little odd from for me but uh, for most of the f most part I was uh, friendly enough with everyone what was the highlight of your career in terms of emotions Um, for you other than Mikhail Lodra <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like uh, honestly you know I wasn't super fanatical about tennis um, I'm actually I enjoy coaching a lot more than than, than playing um, it was so hard for you to be on tour excuse me um, in some ways yes um, I mean I think towards the end of my career I changed my approach to to how I view tennis, how, you know, tennis is part of my life, but, you know, what place it has in my life. And and so, you know, I had a much better relationship with tennis uh, in the second half of my career. Um, so, yeah, in some ways it's difficult, um, and I always enjoyed, I had many interests, uh, so I think it's, it's hard to just take care of just tennis, because if you, if you, truly professional it takes so much of your time that you don't even have time to go to the bathroom sometimes so um, so yeah so I think it was a good experience I think um, you know I've 
I wasn't, you know, maybe like Rafa, I didn't enjoy it that much, but um, but still, like I, it gave me a lot of opportunities that I would have never had had it not been for tennis. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And how did you appreciate more the second part of your career? What was the turning point? Um, well, I I just stopped viewing wins or losses as direct. Uh, Um, you know kind of if you win you're a good person and if you lose you're a bad person so I stopped looking at it that way and I actually started enjoying the the process of learning and, and discovering um, things in tennis so so for me it became more of a you know kind of like I was I started having more passion in uh, in learning Uh, the game not just winning so the result was not as important I mean it was obviously important but but I also cared a lot about whether I'm improving or whether I'm learning something new or not and and that gave it a lot more f that became more fun um, uh, t to look at tennis this way on the court and was it because of a mental coach or because you had enough money not to worry too much about that what was the No, it's just, uh, I don't know, I mean, you know, I guess you gather information as you go along, so, you know, uh, I didn't have a psychologist, um, I think it's fashionable now to have a psychologist, I mean, you know, you lock yourself out of the, out of the, out of your car and you call a psychologist now, like, you know, everything that, you know, something doesn't go the way you want to and you go to a psychologist and you cry about it, so I think that's, a lot more common now than, than before um, but yeah I think just you mature you you know pick up information you you analyze what's happening in your life and what you're doing and th that was that was my journey I um, you know in the first first part of my career I was so focused on having to win and you know and thinking that winning is going to define me as a person and then I slowly started caring more about becoming better as a player not and and if because i realized that okay the results will follow that more if 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 i don't if i don't become a better tennis player it doesn't matter i'm, I'm not going to win matches so yeah. i have to become a better tennis player first and for that i need to learn and and and, and improve so the improvement was a much more a much bigger priority uh back to the highlight you didn't tell us uh the highlight um emotional I don't know. I don't know if I had one. I mean, you know, obviously winning Davis Cup was, uh, but but I didn't feel it like, you know, in the moment you don't feel like you've achieved something special. I think it's just, I think, yeah. I mean, I think you can reflect on it later on in life, but uh, but I've never like truly sort of felt euphorical, you know. And then that's that was very um interesting to me because i thought like you know we would win the, the davis cup and i would feel so much you know love and i don't know like i would i would be in a different planet or something but that never really happened we just won like okay we kind of celebrated but then you know nothing happened <laughs> my life didn't change that 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 much so Um, and I think a lot of times when people chase their goals and when they achieve them, they're like, you know, it's a little bit anticlimactic. And then you realize like, okay, well, now I need a new goal. So, so I think the, the, the journey and the chase is much more important than the actual uh, getting it. Got it. Um, what was your point of view about the French frogs on the tour? Were you <laughs> considering us French Uh, how are you considering us? Because compared to the Russians, we are known not to be that mentally strong, for example. You guys usually fight a bit harder, deeper. What was your point of view about that? I mean, I would argue that we fight. I mean, I think we fight ourselves more than, than anyone else. Uh, but that happens, I think, with a lot of people. Um, but I think it's also like it's, it's a bit of a... Um, A stereotype like French uh, you know like uh, you know like they give up easy and yeah. you know but th that goes all the way like listen from World War II whatever like it's it's a stupid stereotype you know like all Americans eat hamburgers Russians are always drunk uh, yeah you know French are eating frogs and 
I don't know, Spanish have siestas all the time. So, you know, I think I I I try not to stereotype people too much uh, because I think it's dangerous um, when you start doing that. Um, but I've always I think I've had good relationship with pretty much all the French guys. I've actually um, I think like a lot of U.S. guys were kind of like staying kind of closer to each other. Uh, Spanish guys are always like kind of keeping together. I mean, all all sort of you know French guys kind of hang out together. But but I've had really good relationships with a lot of uh, a lot of French players. I mean, uh, Nicolas Mahout. Uh, Gilles Simon, uh, Tonga, um, um, uh, Gael Monfils, Gasquet. Gasquet is kind of like he's the quieter one that I that I haven't really kind of talked so much with. But uh, but yeah, I mean uh, Julian Beneteau and pretty much just all the guys like they're super nice. Uh, well, to me, but again, I didn't have that many enemies. I think I, I think they were more or less. Um, like Roger Vaseline as well um, I, I think they're just more acceptable of my sense of humor because I think for a lot of people my sense of humor can be a little too uh, aggressive so <laughs> so I think they were they were not they were not as Shut offended by my my uh, my attempted sense of humor like some someone can call it lack of humor but Anyway, my perception of what funny is um, matches with the French guys uh, fairly well. Are you still in touch with Marat, Marat Safin? Um, not really. I mean, we, we don't... Um, I think... I, I mean, I see Igor Andreev because simply he's coaching on, on WTA as well. So I see him quite a bit. I mean, we, you know, we chat with some players uh, that are, you know, that are working. But no, we, we don't sort of... We don't stay in touch. Like, I mean, again, I haven't been in Moscow in so long that... I probably I was there maybe like a week um, no not even like in Moscow I was only like for two days in the last year and a half uh, and then in St. Petersburg I was for one week for a tournament so so I'm, I'm not there that much I mean maybe if I was there more then we would hang out but yeah I think I kind of like everyone's sort of doing their own thing so we don't really stay in touch so much so now you're coaching Emma Raducanu Um, so you're still traveling on the tour how do you do to build a family <laughs> being out there all the time yeah well um, so yeah so that's the thing is that I, I was sort of stopping because I felt like you know what I'm, I'm investing so much time energy finances into trying to stay on tour and you know if you're top 100 okay yeah, you're, it, you can make a good living Um, I mean, you're investing your energy, obviously, and, and your training, and, and so you you have your expenses, and but you still have the good income uh, relative to what you're spending, so it makes sense. But then once you start dropping in rankings, you can't really sustain that that much anymore, and and then it's like, okay, well, I'm 34, and how long am I planning to you know work like a like a dog, and then you know have a zero at the end, you know, so. So I didn't, I didn't really feel like investing into, you know, risk financials anymore. Um, and and then like I just, I was frankly, you know, I just felt like I'm 34 years old. I've done nothing but tennis, and you know, I felt like I can't do this for you know another four years. And like, okay, well, what's the what's the point? Like, I have to have an exit strategy of some kind. Um, so I so I thought like, okay, maybe I'll stop traveling. You know, I'll see my mom a little bit more because you know when I was younger, like. I left uh, to US when I was 12 and a half so for like nine years I only saw her like for three weeks out of those nine years so where did you practice in the US uh, in California okay. so I thought like okay I'm maybe I'll just maybe I'll spend a little bit more time with my mom because you know she's getting older and she hasn't seen me for pretty much most of my life um, so and then you know and then I was like okay now it's time to start working and um, I couldn't really f figure out what to do on you know off the tour so i was like okay so it's logical for me plus i enjoy coaching that's kind of that's a sad part of it <laughs> is that is that i enjoy coaching but you need to travel for that so it's a little bit easier for me to travel but of course yeah like it's if you're traveling for you know 40 weeks a year at least and there's not a whole lot of um family or home time so the only way you can do it is by taking the family with you um, so if someone can manage to do that but again 
you know, if you have young kids, they have to go to school. So, the, you know, it's again, it's it become it becomes a logistical problem. So yeah, so it's it's, it's difficult, um, and I think that's why a lot of times players have these difficulties finding good coaches because you know it's like a good coach will want to travel maybe 20 30 weeks a year and and the bad ones or like young ones that don't have a family are willing to travel but they don't have the experience and so it's like you know it's very hard to to get the the right mix you know someone has experience someone that is able to travel someone is willing to deal with all the bs that uh, you know 19 20 year olds come up with uh, you know it's like basically you're you're like becoming a parent in some way mm. um because it's not just coaching i mean if you think that it's just forehands and backhands but a lot of times it's like just reminding a player to bring an extra pair of shoes or like okay why didn't you string the rackets or like where are your rackets oh you left your rackets at home or like oh you're you know like you forgot to enter into a tournament and so yes yeah, so there's a lot of stuff behind the behind the kind of mm, like background stuff that, that you know everyone thinks tennis is so professional but <laughs> I mean sometimes like just the mistakes that, that uh, rookies do or there's they're just funny how do you how did you get in touch with Emma to start your I didn't collaboration? Uh, so her, her agent uh, got in touch with me um, and um, I, I think it's actually a better way of Honestly, I think it's better if the player approaches, not the coach, because I think ultimately it's the player that needs help, not, you know, if the coach approaches the player, then it's it's a little, it's harder to figure out, is it is it the coach that needs the job or the, is it the player that needs the coach? And um, yeah, nowadays it's a little, it's changed quite a bit. Um, players are, you know, they're the they're the bosses, and so it, it changes the dynamic, the working dynamic. Um, so I think it's it's not a good thing uh, because a 19 year old sometimes doesn't even know how to book a flight ticket. So how can they mis decide how to how to structure um, a, a working relationship with someone? So in that sense, I think it's not very good, but. Um, You know, it is the way it is. So, she's had ten coaches in one year. <laughs> is it is it stressful for you to be in the position not to know what's going on one week after another? How do you deal with that? Um, so, uh, well, I mean, I guess yeah, ten would be like a little exaggeration, but yes. Yeah, so that's what kind of that's the. That's what everyone sort of knows. Like, if ever anyone asks about like Emma Raducanu, like, do you know her? Like, oh yeah, she's the girl that had like tons of coaches. Um, so yeah, so it's obviously not a good reputation to have. Um, but you know, if we've and actually I've, I've mentioned it even before. Like I uh, and I told that if one of the first things I said to her agent and her coach, I said like, listen, well, you know, you have a reputation for her for this and. It's like it has been happening, so like obviously we need to address that or we need to discuss that because you know it's, uh, it, it's nobody wants to nobody wants to be in a situation that's not very stable. Um, and you know I, I liked I liked her explanation of, of of you know the fact that you know she she hasn't been able to find someone that she truly connects with. And I, I respect that because uh, as a player, I, I didn't travel sometimes with coaches simply because I could not find the right voice. You know, I didn't trust. I couldn't, you know, I didn't feel like the connection was with, you know, with Joe or, you know, whatever, Brian or. But then with someone, you feel like you have a good connection and you, you, you feel like they understand your game and they understand you as a player. And so that's, you know, ultimately you want to have a coach that, that sort of understands where you're coming from. It's a little easier to connect. Um, some of the things you don't have to explain. Um, because also as a young player, a lot of times they're not a, not very good at giving the information, you know, like uh, giving a feedback. They, they can't explain their own feelings. They don't even understand sometimes what's going on. Like they're not, they don't understand if they're scared or if they're angry. You know, it's like a little kid who, who's learning about emotions. And, and so, so they're going through a very, very high learning curve and and if you don't really feel the player like as a coach 
if you don't understand what they're going through, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to 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 coach. You know, it's, it's I think a lot of times parents have that problem when they're when they're trying to coach is because they don't they don't understand where the player is coming from. Like the player says, like I'm scared or I'm afraid, and like why oh, why are you afraid? Like like you know they don't understand that because they they haven't really played themselves. Mm. Um, so yes, I think it it helps to have a good connection with someone and um, and so you know when that explanation makes sense to me and it makes sense to me how again I think a lot of other players go through you know through coaches but it's just not very we don't hear about it but you know with Emma I think the fact that you know she changed right after um uh, right after she won US Open, I think that was just very sort of everyone saw it or everyone heard about it. But I guess there's also some there's a, a valid reason. It's not like you know, it's not like she decided like oh, okay you know what I win the tournament and now you're fired. Like it wasn't like that. They, they there was a lot of um, you know I think the coach couldn't travel as well. So so it's not like. It's not like she, he got fired. They, they just they, they kind of had an agreement for a certain period. So it's just anyway. Yeah. It, it's you know that's uh, fr- from that end. Like uh, you know, obviously she explained that part. But also the, the thing the thing is is that ultimately, listen, I've gotten fired already twice, and you know what? It's I'm not I'm not scared of being fired. Like if um, ultimately I know I have information that I can that I can provide, and if player wants this information I'm there if the player doesn't want this information I'm still there you know it's fine I'm like it's okay I, I've been jobless before so I know how to survive and 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 it, I think it gives me a little bit more strength I think the more it's like a message to you the more you fire me the stronger I get <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah so I think in that sense I'm you know if she fires me tomorrow okay it's her it's her decision okay like I might not like it. I might not agree with it, but ultimately, I'm gonna survive. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna cry too much about it. Okay, Emma. So you can like the video and share. <laughs> Please don't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> How's your connection? Um, I mean, I, I I think she's uh, really good. Um, I mean, I, I was actually surprised because I didn't know her. Um, uh, so I, I, I really like her. I mean, she's a great person. Um, she's smart. Uh, she works hard. You know, obviously, like we all have our own things. You know, every player has their own quirks and 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 character traits. And sometimes, you know, players can be stubborn or or you know hard to coach. But you know, you're not going to get a perfect player. But but I think the you know she's she's a she's a really good person. I really like her. So. It makes it a little bit easier for me, you know. Whether things change or not, who knows? But for now, for now, uh, I'm not complaining about anything. I've been seeing you playing on court. You don't necessarily leash your shoes. <laughs> you don't need it. No. So this is a. This is just a very good shoe. Um, oh, she plays too slow for you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh. So this shoe it has like a, a built-in uh, kind of a sock. So it's yeah. pretty. It's actually that's why I like it because you can. T- t- put it on and off and you don't have to lace it and of course like if I had to play a match I would probably just lace it up uh, but yeah I mean I uh, for now for now she hasn't gotten to to the level uh, to make me lace my shoes so <laughs> not the message to you Emma um, this is this is how like this is like you know like in, in old movies like uh, martial arts where you know the teacher is like fighting his student and then like loses to the student and he says like you're ready <laughs> it's like she's not ready yet yeah. <laughs> the cool thing is that when i see you playing you look like you you look like a kid you look like you still like it like a kid is that the case you look like you're really actually playing tennis um now i think i enjoy it a little bit more uh, because i don't it's not my job anymore but i don't also i don't play very okay. often yeah um I got lucky here in Porto Rose then. Yeah, yeah. No, but but also like um, you know, I've, I've with the net I was hitting quite a bit. With the I was hitting quite a bit until um, she wanted to um, to get a sparring partner. So, so yeah. So with Emma, like I'm I'm hitting with her for now. Um, you know, if she feels like I'm not good enough for hitting anymore, then she'll she'll maybe get a sparring partner. But for now, I think 
it's good. Plus, you know, when you when you hit with a player, you you actually feel a bit like what's happening with with their shots. You feel like okay, you're not really hitting. You know, like yeah, you're making a lot of sound, and uh, but the ball is not really not really pushing you. So, so yes, I I, I like to hit. Um, you know, and I don't I don't mind hitting. I don't mind running a bit. What about the hairs? They were short when you stopped. What happened? Last question. Yeah, man, stopped making money. So, um, um, so yeah. So now it's, uh, you know, <laughs> saving, not much. Save, saving, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm because. Do the girl like, like it more like that? That your choice? Um, actually, I've been getting a lot of complaints, uh, but which is, I guess, is what makes me like want to keep it longer because like, that means I'm doing something right if the girls are complaining that means I'm doing right <laughs> um, but uh, yeah like if I cut it I'll never get it long again so I'm like I don't know I'm just I don't all right I'm not like the tinder doesn't work anymore for me so it's like what? <laughs> okay thanks for your time it was a cool chat uh, three days running after you but we made it thanks for it yeah, yeah, no problem. we should the best for the tournament the rest of the season and I don't know, the future. All right, thanks. Cheers. <laughs> thanks. thanks.